Good morning. How is everyone? Are we good? It's Tuesday. It's been a morning. I tried to fix the coffee machine. It was not playing. It wasn't playing nice. So I've just left it. And then our car got a recall. So David's gone off to go fix that. And then I've got this. So thankfully, this is the good part of the day. (laughs) Okay, we're going to do an easy, easy, easy. I say that every single time, don't I? We're going to do an easy one today. Hi, George. Um, But yeah, we are. And it's going to be two stitches that I always teach together because they look exactly the same. Not a good start. That's okay, but it can be like the rest of the day can be good, you know? So maybe I got all the bad out of the, out of the way and then the rest of the day is just going to be amazing. I don't know. So um, I always teach these two stitches together. Let me just open the door for Jesse real quick. Um, and I like to work on my embroidery from the very back to the very front. And that's why we did the greenhouse first because all of these stitches are behind all the other stitches and we can layer, oh no, she doesn't want to go out anymore. She's just walked away. (laughs) She said, you're not quick enough. Um, And then we can layer the next layers on top of it and on top of it and on top of it. So almost like in a painting where you would paint the background first and then you put the little details on top of it. Um, So it looks like the background is completely behind. Yeah? So if you haven't guessed it yet, we're going to do these little frond-looking things here. One, two, three. Just three. And we're going to do the fern stitch and the fly stitch. They look exactly the same. They are just done a little bit differently. And I say they look the same. Um... In essence, they look the same. If you look really closely, you can see differences. So we're going to take the darkest color. It's number 218, the darkest green. And we're going to use all six strands for this. If you would like to use less strands, you can, but I want them to be quite thick in the background. So um, I'll do the fly stitch and the fern stitch for two. Then you can see how they differ and which one you like to do more and then for the third one you can pick what you want whichever one you want to do so you kind of get like a choose your own situation there so just like always take your six strands thread your needle do a little knot on the end Here we go. Hi, everyone. I love that you guys always say hi to each other in the comments. It's so cute. Okay, so let's do the fern stitch first. The fern stitch is just three straight stitches, one in the middle, one on each side. One in the middle, one on each side. That's it. So it kind of goes along with our straight stitches that we did yesterday. So let's see here. We'll do this one here with the fern. Let's just zoom in a little bit more. Okay. So we'll do one down the middle. You can start at the top here or you can start down here. It's up to you. Some people don't like to put the knot where they're going to have more stitches going in, if that makes sense. Um, But I find that sometimes it helps to hide the back, Uh, the knot, sorry, like the the knot, um, you know, like the little threads that are with the knot. There's also a no knot start. I can show you that too, if you'd like. Hi, Caro. So we're just making three straight stitches. They're having that nice point. And you can go from here to there, or you can go from there to here. Both are okay. I often will switch it up um, because it doesn't actually affect the look of the stitch, if you know what I mean. 
So if you complete it from the tip to the bottom, or if you complete it the other way, they look the same. So, <clears throat> so I quite like that. Especially if you have like a tricky, a tricky little area where you can't necessarily put your needle up there because it would make, you know, like maybe there's too not too many knots or maybe you have too many pieces of thread going down into the same hole or something like that, and you need to kind of adjust where you put where you put your stitches. And sometimes you'll have that, you know, sometimes you'll have it where you physically can't put it there or you can't find the right spot. I have all the lights on and the light's not so great today. It's, it's, it is nice out, but it just looks a bit washed out. So we're just continuing. Easy peasy. Now, the fern and fly stitches, they're always, people always get them mixed up. And that's mostly because they do look the same and they both start with an F. So there's already two things against you, really. <coughs> um, but the main difference is that the fern stitch has three stitches and they all go down to the same hole. Whereas the fly stitch has one stitch held by another stitch. And it almost looks like those birds that you, that you use, um, you used to make when you were little, like four and five and eight years old. And you did the little check like this. And you were like, it's birds flying in the sky. Do you know what I'm talking about? Well, I used to do it at least. I used to be like, oh, they're so artistic with my bird, my bird flying. And it was really just like a V. <laughs> well, that's literally what the fly stitch is. So that's how I remember it. Because sometimes it can get a little bit like, is it the fern stitch? Is it a little fly? I don't know. I don't know. I can't tell. Okay, we're almost done with this one. I did that too, Hannah. Yes. I'm glad I'm not the only one because I really thought that I was like, oh my gosh, like an up and coming artist when I did that. I was like, look how artistic they look. Wow. I'm like amazing. I made those birds in the sky. They're flying. Do you see them? Ugh. I wish I had the confidence now that I did as I, when I was a kid, you know, like making things and being like, oh, I made this. And now I'm like, oh, is it good enough? Or is everyone going to like it? Is it all right? I can do better. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Whereas back then I was like literally taking V's and like saying they're birds and thinking I was like, you know, going to be in an art gallery or something. <laughs> oh, so funny. Okay, and then we're just going to end, I'm going to go down into this one just a little bit, just so that um, they're not like floating apart from each other, so that this one here, when we go to stitch it, yeah, it's not like this, we want this, this thing here, this like aloe plant or snake plant, whatever, it's kind of be like overlapping it a little bit, so it doesn't have to be loads, just, just a wee bit, okay, so that you can kind of put it over there. So there's the first one. That's the fern stitch. <clears throat> it's a quick one today. And then we've got the fly stitch as well. So don't go anywhere. And let's do, we'll do the fly stitch for this one right here, this middle one. Now you can choose whichever one you want. Okay, like if you want to do the fern stitch for this one over here, if you want to make the lines closer together, you can. Like obviously these are more spaced out than these ones. Um, it's completely up to you. Oh, Kim says my art teacher told me I was rubbish. It really crushed me, crushed the joy out of me as a kid. Do you know what? That's why I shared that thing from the Allison show the other day. 
I say the other day, Midwestern people do this, you know, from the States. The other day, it could be last month, yesterday, last week, last year. It could be any time. But I shared this the other day and she was saying, what if the things when you were a kid that adults encouraged you to do and said that you were good at is actually what you ended up doing. And because you were good at those things, or you were you were told that you were good at those things, that's actually what you believed to be true. And therefore that's where you ended up. Isn't that interesting? I feel like it's so interesting because I was good at art. Um, and I was really encouraged to do that. So, and look where I, look where I am, you know? Okay. So the first one, I need to stop talking so much, really. (laughs) So the first one starts like this, because we've got an extra little stitch there. I need to tighten my hoop up, it looks like. Okay. So from here, you're going to go up on the left and down on the right, or up on the right and down on the left. It doesn't matter because it looks exactly the same. Okay. So we'll go like this. Make your little loop like this and down. Okay. Now keep your loop like that. Keep your loop. And you're going to come up here at this one. You see it? Okay. Not down here or else you're going to have a big gap in between your uh, uh, leaves, the stem, the stem the stick. (laughs) You're going to have a big gap in between your stitches, basically. So let's go like this. Okay. Inside the loop, pull it like that, and then do your straight stitch again. Okay. So maybe I can go a little bit closer. So let's do it the other way. Yeah. We'll go up on the right. It's exactly the same. Down on the left. Now we want to be careful not to actually pierce these lines because these lines are actually, there's nothing holding them there. Um, And we don't want to go through the line or else it'll kind of pin it into place. We just want to, we just want to let it be free. Okay. Pull it like that and put your thing down. All right. Let's do some more. This one's a bit quicker than the other one, I think, because the other one, you've got three separate stitches. And this one's kind of like two. In my mind, that's what I think, though. That's how I justify it. Um, But this one doesn't have really crisp, crisp lines like this one. So I'll zoom in a little bit closer when I have it finished. Um, so you can see like how they are different and how they're the same. Hi from Sweden. Definitely going to zoom or scroll back up in the comments. So So keep commenting if you still want to chat about that. I just found it so interesting because she was always told um, the birdie stitch. Because birds fly, it's the fly stitch. See? See? It makes sense. (coughs) Sorry. Yeah, so, so the fern stitch is very, very crisp. It has those nice V you know, sharp points, whereas these ones are not as crispy. Because the, the stitch in the middle is holding this stitch in this shape. So if we didn't have this middle stitch to hold it, then it wouldn't, it wouldn't be in the V shape, see? You're literally holding that down like that with this middle stitch. But these are super fun. Hey, don't do that. 
But these are super fun because you can make them really close together and it can almost be like a feather. You can make them really far apart and they can be like a detail in the middle of a leaf or something like that, you know? Okay, and it looks like there's just one peeking out from here. So I'm just going to go like this and do that one with a straight stitch and end it like that. Yeah, because it's just like peeking out from there. Okay, so for the last one, you can pick whichever one you want. If you like the fly stitch, do the fly stitch. If you like the fern, do the fern. I'm going to do a little knot on the back. I also really like the back of the fly stitch. Look at that. Isn't that so nice? I feel like it looks so nice. So yeah, for the third one, um, pick whichever one that you like. Say it again, Tori. Just say it again. And there is no judgment. So if you want... Okay, are you going out or no? Are you going out? You're like pacing. You're making me nervous. Go. Enjoy. Be free. Goodness, she is like, ugh, she's annoying today. Here we go. All right, so if we go a little bit closer, you can totally see how these two, this one right here is crisp, and this one right here has almost like a, like a wavy look to it, you know, because they're just being held like that. Um, and then if you really want to, you can add more when everything's done. Um, so if you wanted to add a couple more somewhere else in the pattern, like in maybe in the corner here, down in the front, something like that, of course you can add more. So let's, let's do the last one. I probably don't have enough room um, to finish with that. So what I'll do is I'll show you the, the no not start. So with the no not start, you need double the length that you think you will. So if you have a, a special length that you like to work with, you wanna double that, okay? And you're gonna take three strands, because we're gonna double the thread. So this is for the no not start. Yeah, these are recorded. They're all recorded and they're saved to IGTV immediately um, because I just push a button and it goes there. Do you know what I mean? I don't have to upload it or like wait or anything like that. It's like 10 seconds. I just add a description and then they go there immediately. And then, um, oh, where are you? And then I upload them afterwards to YouTube just because some people like them there better like to watch them there, they're better. And um, before they had captions on the YouTube one and I think they have captions on this one now too. So hopefully the captions are correct. Sometimes it tells me some weird stuff, says that I'm saying weird stuff, but hopefully all the captions are good. So with the no not start, what you're gonna do is fold your thread in half So that both of the ends are together and the other end is the loop. Yeah. So, cause my thread's really long cause I did it twice as long as I should have, you know? So this is one end, both of the ends are together and the other end is a loop. So for this one, cause we want six strands. Yeah. So this works with two strands, four strands, six strands, eight strands. It does not work with one strand because if you fold the one strand over, you'll get two, you know? So we've got three and three and we're making six because we need six strands. And you're going to thread your needle with, oh, that's one of my hairs, fantastic. It's just what y'all wanted to see. So thread your needle with all six strands and leave your little tail like we normally do, okay? Now this end has a loop and this is where we're gonna get our no knot start from. So let's get started here. You're gonna go up through 
to the front like that and down I'm gonna make it a little bit longer <clears throat> okay and don't pull it through all the way you're gonna pull it through almost all the way but if you pull it all the way you're gonna pull it out because there's no knot there yeah you've just got a loop now take your needle and put this needle through the loop And that's your no knot start. Okay, and you can continue stitching however you want to stitch these ones. I'll probably end up doing fly stitch because it's quicker. It's quick. Maybe I'll add a couple more in there too because they're pretty spaced out, these ones. Okay, so let me do a couple stitches and then I'll show you what it looks like on the back. Now the only problem with this is that sometimes because you separated the threads, hey, stop, stop, stop. Okay, sometimes because you separated the threads, they're not all twisted together like they are when you take out all six strands. So sometimes, um, you might get a rogue thread that is not behaving well. So that's the only thing to watch out for when you do it this way. I'm kind of going off the pattern a little bit here. It's not lining up nicely, but that's okay. Don't worry about it. Hi, Sarah. Now, the good thing with the fern stitch is that if you want to put more stitches in, then you kind of can, like if you wanted to add little things here and there or whatever, but the fly stitch, it's kind of like, that's it. They wouldn't like go together because these are all straight stitches. So if you wanted to add another straight stitch, then you could, but with the fly stitch, however you put them, or it's kind of however you put them, you can add some more straight stitches to it, but you can't really add more fly stitches. Ooh, Veronica's finished during the live. Sarah says I'm supposed to be working, but the long weekend has messed up my focus. I feel that. That's why I wanted the coffee and then was upset when it did not, it didn't work out. But hey-ho, these things happen. I said I'd make them closer together and I really didn't. But that's okay. It is what it is. Now, the closer that you get these, the more almost you can see the little bumps. And then obviously, if you don't like such a thick, a thick line for your fronds or sticks or what are they called? I don't want to call them ferns because... <laughs> We have the fern stitch and the fly stitch, and you can use both for both. So I don't want to mix anyone up. Foliage. There you go. Now, some people on the back, instead of doing a knot, they will weave their thread through. But I find that works better with um, stitches that you have more threads to weave, you know, so you could just put this up underneath a bunch and that's fine, you know, and that would be okay. I'm just going to do a little double knot and call it a day. So that's it. We've got the fern stitch and the fly stitch. 
Eee! They're so cute. I love these. Um, so yeah, like I said, if you wanted to add some more, then of course you could. You can experiment with less than six strands because like I said, <coughs> sorry, yesterday, um, you can split these. So if you wanted to do three, if you wanted to do really skinny, tall, wavy ones or something, you can add more there, like over in the side or kind of mingling around and add different layers and layers and layers. I would say probably wait until the end, until we have a little bit more stitched, if you want to stitch on top of things that we haven't stitched yet, you know, because we're trying to work from the back to the front. Um, and anything that we have like hidden behind, like I'm not saying you have to do it that way, all right? Um, but it's always a little bit easier to do it that way because you can always stick your stitches in. So like this big guy here, we're probably going to do on Friday. Ooh, I didn't add the little things to this one. I've just noticed that. But we'll probably do this one on Friday because then you have the whole weekend to kind of like to finish it and, then, and we don't have to like have it done for the next day. You know, you won't feel so much pressure. So things like this we'll probably do like on Friday and then the rest of the week we'll kind of work on the foliage here, doing some woven wagon wheels and the alternative like straight stitch situation. It's going to be so fun. So I hope that you enjoyed and I hope you have a lovely Tuesday. I'm going to go back to my coffee machine and try to make it work. Jessie's already not interested in anything today. She's like, just play with me or not, <laughs> or don't do anything else. Like pay attention. Um, so yeah, I'll speak with you tomorrow and I hope you have a lovely day. Bye.